all other panelists who are well known to me for quite some time it's very exciting that we are talking about universities of the future in fact before talking about universities of the future universities of the past present we should also understand before going into the future in the past right from ancient times you know maybe thousands of years ago that there was a system of education which was gurukula system followed by takshila nalanda which we are proud of to the present day education which was inherited from the british era and now we have about 1000 universities in our country and there are many who aspire to be in the global top but we have, we have a lot of challenges that is what we are in the state of affairs today but when you look at the uh, future universities i think couple of things which we should remember that there is going to be change but certain things will remain so constant they cannot change and some of them will change and that is what we should understand before going into the future of the universities number one during this covid times uh, due to the lockdown we learned many things which we were not practicing which were possible but we did do it for example online education was not a key thing we were always in the face to face mode most of the time except that uh, the creation of swayam portal moocs portal where more than 2500 courses have been onboarded more than 1 crore students are watching them 147 countries are using this but despite all this despite you know ugc and iict making regulation that 30% of the coursework can be had from the swayam program and then credited to your account in your universities very few universities have taken this forward so there are challenges of a variety of kind but nevertheless during this last couple of months when we were all in lockdown there were no choice left for most of the universities but to transform themselves into online education mode those who were well prepared they had a very smooth transition and i have been repeating this in many talks that it is in fluid mechanics we call it as a laminar flow so they were easily transgressing from the normal face to face mode to the the mode which where we have this online mode the second type of where those where were some ripples here and there because the infrastructure was there some of the faculty were prepared but others were not prepared so they had to come on board so that took some time for them but the third category are the one which were worst hit because they had neither the the infrastructure in terms of what is required for online education nor faculty were prepared and this was a turbulent era for them so i think this explains fluid mechanics phenomena of mechanical engineering in this aspect well having learned from all of this we started experimenting the icit itself has done a lot of experiments in the last two months in terms of first starting a helpline for students who are in difficulties to going ahead with all faculty development workshops which used to happen for five days on a face to face mode we transformed them into online mode using all possible technologies whether it is zoom whether it is microsoft teams whether it was a webex platform or whether it is google you know all platforms were used for faculty development program of three different varieties number one they were all related with universal human values we have a three week mandatory induction program for inculcating human values amongst our students so there were a lot of training required for faculty It was one set of workshops the second ones were for all the futuristic technologies like ai iot machine learning deep learning robotics 3d printing blockchain cloud computing cyber security we have under atal academies huge number of workshops which were held earlier in in, in face to face mode we also transformed them into online mode the third one was of that of examination reforms you talked about examination a little bit earlier and therefore moving from rote learning or memory based learning to how we go for higher levels of learning and test students which is also important for accreditation purposes and ranking purposes i think we have moved on all in all these fronts uh, and then lastly even what is not normally acceptable or not possible was the physical inspection of the campuses which we used to do which is called as uh, evcs you know expert visit committees to the institutions for checking the infrastructure today we are doing it all online using microsoft team no visitor is going to a college but college will be still inspected and the approvals will be granted i i think there is a big transformation and change which has going have happened in the last two months so future of the universities is 
likely to be more on the blended platform or blended way because we want students to still come to the institutions the brick and mortar universities must continue for a variety of reasons uh, whether it is human to human interaction whether it is learning something from each other by peers to peers or from faculty to students or for playing <coughs> games in in the playground or uh, functions which are in form for several clubs these are all required as physical activities and therefore you will have brick and mortar facilities but more and more online education more and more education through use of technology will start emerging in the future in the future universities may be requiring little less infrastructure in terms of brick and mortar but more infrastructure in terms of uh, what is known as uh, capability in terms of computing power whether it is in terms of uh, the classrooms which are smart classrooms which are also going to be engaged with other institutions together i think these are the future things which are likely to happen including examination i think i will close here because otherwise uh, we go on uh, others will speak and then if required we i will come back uh, as well as answer some of the queries which uh, audience will have uh, so i think uh, in the beginning itself we already acknowledged what he is saying that uh, you know entirely online in many cases is not feasible not possible as on date and therefore we have to depend on brick and mortar and classroom face to face teaching learning process as well along with the online but gradually we are moving more and more towards online the percentage of courses that can be taken online right now are 20% there is already discussion about how to increase it to 40% you know likelihood of uh, getting more online education possible secondly uh, many of them uh, are referring to the job market employability and all that i think there are a large number of ai based uh, lot of technologies which have been developed tools developed by many startups whereby a guided learning or personalized learning is very much possible thereby skill sets can be developed for not only employability but for becoming entrepreneur as well uh, i think that is the order of the day we ourselves aict mhrd started what is known as neet national educational alliance for technologies and this is a paid portal and people have to buy the seats and for every four seats one buys one seat is given free by the company which we will provide to the socially deprived sections of the society be it economically backward or uh, sc st etc so i think this was the model which we started off but today during covid times there are more than 50 such products available free of cost from different companies and students are able to learn this is number one and secondly as far as uh, the real life problems are concerned many companies are giving problems for internship and that is a internship which is from home so not necessary to go to the industry this is online internships are possible well there are many company people who can guide them mentor them by first giving a problem statement and then uh, guiding a student in, in solving that problem i think many many opportunities are possible online but nevertheless we should remember that 100% everything online is quite not likely immediately but more and more possibilities of making use of technologies so we should talk about rather collaboration uh, or cooperation between the face to face I, and that's why i call, use the word blended or you call it hybrid or whatever name one curriculum or one uh, single you know whatever you call it uh, syllabus is not uh, advisable not feasible uh, for multiple reasons so i think all universities are autonomous and their academic councils and uh, senates have the right to have their own curriculum nevertheless we want the curriculum to be revised regularly and if universities are not doing as a regulatory body as well as a facilitator we are providing some kind of a you know program which is uh, holistic as well as which has all the modern inputs that are desired for employability entrepreneurship innovation and all that as a model curriculum each university has not only right but it, they should do depending on local requirements their own vision mission tweak with that curriculum and adopt it to the extent that is possible and then work on that and then lastly whatever curriculum we have framed or every one of those courses we have tried to match a responding swayam course which is available on the portal of swayam and we are announcing it we have already announced on the portal and like a, in a textbook uh, or a reference book this swayam course is also like a material which is to be used by the institutions 
uh, it may be possible that your own university curriculum course may not be 100% matching with some course, but even if it is matching 75%, 80%, it is desired that student willing to take that course should be allowed to do that. And that is the change that we are doing. So wherever there are still gaps, we want to create new SWAM courses as well. So I think this is a multifaceted activity which we should go on. And the credit transfer should be allowed to the extent that is possible. Even credit banking we are talking about and keeping credits in your account. And then subsequently, after some time, by going to different universities and earning those credits, you should be in a position to get a degree. And here is where our students who are not able to go abroad should not worry much. You can take courses from many universities across the globe, not necessarily only from India. 